Hi kids, welcome to our Good Friday children's service. Now kids, Good Friday is one of those beautiful remembrances. That means we look back and we remember what Jesus did for us. But the name Good Friday is kind of odd when you think about what happened on that Friday. You see, that was the day when Jesus did most of his suffering. That's when they hurt Jesus and they did bad things to him. And the Bible says that Jesus let them do that because he did it for us. It was a very sad day for Jesus. And it was a very happy day for us because we got to have all the benefits. We get to be forgiven of our sins. We get to be in God's family because of what Jesus did for us on Good Friday. I'm not telling you these things to make you sad. I'm telling you these things so that you'll know how much God loves you. I wanna draw you some pictures while I talk. I'm gonna teach and I'm gonna let you follow along as I draw. So pay close attention because this is what Jesus did for you. We're gonna begin where Jesus was praying in the garden. He was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible says that Jesus was in deep anguish. That means he was extremely sad because he knew what he was about to have to do to take away the sins of the whole world. Now Jesus was very brave, braver than anyone, because Jesus knew exactly what was about to happen and he still went through with it. The Bible says that when Jesus was in the garden, he prayed to his heavenly Father. He said, Father, if there's any other way that we can do this, please let me know. But if there's not, not what I want, but what you want, Heavenly Father. And Jesus knew there was no other way. So he became obedient, even to death on the cross. But Jesus was praying, praying so much. The Bible says that Jesus told his disciples, he says, I'm so sad, I'm sorrowful unto death, meaning I'm so sad, it's almost like I feel like I could die right now. And the Bible tells us in the book of Luke that God sent an angel to strengthen Jesus so that he did not die before he got to the cross. I don't think I've ever been that sad in my whole life, and I don't know anybody else who has either. But Jesus did it for you, and he did it for me. He did not... He did not like the idea of having to become sin, the sin sacrifice for the whole world, but he knew that's why he had come. He never knew any sin. He'd never sinned. He'd never done anything wrong. But yet, he endured the cross for you and me. So Jesus prayed. And then in the garden, it says the soldiers came. And the soldiers came and they took Jesus. And Jesus let them take him. And they took him to the religious leaders. And the religious leader says, he deserves to die because he says he's the son of God. Well, Jesus was the son of God. He is the son of God. But they did not believe in him. So they said, let's send him to the Roman governor named Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate said, I don't see anything wrong with him. I don't see any reason why he should die. I can't see anything that he's ever done. But still, Pontius Pilate went ahead and said, have him whipped, have him beaten. So they took a whip called a scourge. And it was one of the worst weapons that you could use against somebody. And it was a, a terrible, painful thing. And they beat Jesus with this whip and they beat him until the blood ran down and Jesus endured it for you and for me. And the whip had, had lead balls at the end of it. 
And those lead balls were supposed to tear away at people's skin and make them hurt even more. And they did this to Jesus. Even though Pontius Pilate said, I don't see anything that he's done wrong, he still let them do that to Jesus. And Jesus, it says, uttered not a word. He just took it for us. Then the Bible says they tried to make fun of him. And they made a crown for him. You like the kind of a crown that a king would wear? But they didn't make that kind of a crown for Jesus. These people were very angry and very evil. And they made a crown of thorns. Thorns are sharp like nails. And they're very painful. If you were to ever stick your finger on one, it would make you bleed. Well, they had hundreds of them on the crown that they made for Jesus. And they went ahead, and when they got done making this crown, they stuck it on Jesus' head, and they pushed it down hard so that it would hurt. And Jesus wore a crown of thorns for you and for me. They pushed it down on his head. They tried to make fun of him. They said, oh, if you're a king, here, here's a crown. And they made this horrible, horrible thing to put on Jesus' head. Then they took Jesus away. And they took him to a hill called Golgotha. Golgotha was a place where they killed their criminals. And they took Jesus there because they wanted to crucify him there. And so they took Jesus to this horrible place. And there were men waiting there with hammers like this one. And they used that hammer to do something terrible. They used that hammer to nail Jesus to a cross. They took these big heavy hammers and they used a spike like this. Not just a little nail, but a big spike. A spike is like a giant nail. And they used that to nail Jesus' hands and Jesus' feet. And they nailed him to a cross. And on the cross, Pontius Pilate said, I want you to put a sign on there. And I want you to write it in three different languages. I want you to write it in Greek, in Hebrew, or Aramaic, and in Latin. And I want to say, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. We'll pretend that that's Greek, that that's Hebrew, that's Latin. And they wrote on there, Jesus, King of the Jews. You know, kids, when I was a little boy and I heard about all the terrible things that they did to Jesus, it made me really angry. And I said to myself, why did Jesus have to die? Jesus never did anything wrong. Jesus never sinned. He wasn't the bad one. Why did Jesus die? He was good. Why didn't they get a bad person and nail them to a cross? Somebody who deserved it. Somebody who was bad and had done a lot of bad things. Why didn't they hurt that kind of a person instead of hurting Jesus, who was perfect? You see, I didn't understand. But now that I'm older, I do. You see, when I was young, right about your age, I didn't know why. But the answer is very simple. 
You can't clean something that's dirty with something else that's dirty. For example, let's say that you said, Pastor Adam, could you come over to my house and help me wash the windows? The windows on my house are really dirty. Can you come and help me wash them? And I said, sure, I'll come over. And when I got there, I said, okay, I brought my, my rags. Here we go, here's my rags. We're just gonna go ahead and clean those windows. We'll clean those windows with these rags and let's get started. You'd say, wait a minute, Pastor Adam, we can't clean the windows with those. Those are filthy, these are dirty. You can't clean the windows. You can't wash something clean with something that's dirty. You need something, something clean. You need something that doesn't have any stains on it. Something pure if you wanna wash something that's dirty. Well, kids, the Bible says we were all dirty with sin. Sin makes you dirty on the inside. Sin makes our heart dirty. And sin made it so that nobody on earth was good enough to pay for our sins. In fact, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. You know what that means? There was nobody in the whole world who could save us. So God sent someone perfect, somebody who didn't have any sin. He sent his own son, Jesus. And Jesus was so pure and so clean, and because he had no sin, that when he died on that cross, he had the power to wash all of us, the whole world, clean from our sins. And that gift waits for anyone who wants to take it. How dumb would it be to be on Christmas morning and you look under the tree and you see a big, amazing looking package, a gift under the tree and it's got your name on it and you never open it. Would you do that? I know I wouldn't do that. Well, God says, I'm giving you the gift of forgiveness and eternal life if you wanna open that gift. We open that gift with our faith. I know that I believe in Jesus. I opened that gift because I love him and I know that he loves me and he loves you. And if you wanna open that gift, all you have to do is ask him. All you have to do is put your faith in Jesus and you can have the gift. God will give you eternal life. He'll forgive you of all your sins and he'll let you be a part of his family. The Bible says he'll call you one of his sons and one of his daughters. Well, kids, Jesus, was the clean and perfect sacrifice. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he didn't have any sin at all, but he became sin so that we could be made pure and righteous. Well, then they took Jesus and they put him in a tomb. A tomb is a place where you bury somebody. And they put a big stone, a big old stone in front of that tomb. And they buried Jesus. And you know what? All of his friends were so sad. They said, oh, how could this have happened? How in the world could this have happened? This is so sad. This is so sad. But you know what? As sad as this was, Jesus died on a Friday. But as sad as this was, Jesus said, I'm going to raise from the dead in three days. Now let me see, if Jesus died on a Friday, that means he raised from the dead on a Sunday. And guess which Sunday that is? That's Easter Sunday. That's the Sunday that we celebrate that Jesus raised from the dead. So you see, as sad as Good Friday is, Easter Sunday is all that much happier because Jesus raised from the dead. You know what the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 18? Jesus says, nobody can take my life away from me. He says, I lay it down freely and I will take it back again. That's how powerful Jesus was. You see the devil and all of hell and everybody on earth and all the strongest people and all their armies could never have killed Jesus. With one word, Jesus could have wiped out the entire world. He could have killed everybody. But he laid his life down freely for you and for me. So kids, 
I know this is a little bit sad when we think about these things, but the Bible writes them down so that we'll remember. We'll remember what Jesus did, how much it cost Jesus so that you could be in his family. So, yes, it is Friday. The kids get excited because Sunday is coming.